Is it time for tax reform? As Australia sinks into a deep post-pandemic recession, a number of academics and tax system experts are demanding tax reform to be put at the top of the government's agenda by Nina Hendy. Key takeaways from this audio article. Calls for reforming Australia's tax system have been growing louder as economists ponder post-pandemic economic recovery. Critics argue that the current system is the product of new provisions and ideas piled on existing ones without consideration of how they relate to different aspects of the law or how they affect economic activity. Another concern is that the tax system is too reliant on personal and company income taxes and places a disproportionate compliance burden on small businesses. Australia's tax system has been called inefficient, complex and unfair by some of the country's most prominent tax experts who are pushing for major tax reforms. In the midst of a pandemic fueled recession, poised to become one of the worst in living memory, some economists insist that reforming the tax system is the only way to pull the nation back from the brink of economic disaster. That is because while the current tax system raises the revenue needed to run the country, the structure applied to raising taxes may not withstand the heavy lifting required for economic recovery, let alone growth in the future. One of the most vocal critics of the current tax system is Dr Ken Henry, the author of the extensive Australia's Future Tax System Review, informally known as the Henry Tax Review. Henry was a key advisor to the government during the introduction of the goods and services tax in the year 2000. He is concerned that the current system is overly reliant on personal and company income taxes. He argues that the deteriorating tax system will fail to support the recovery in economic activity from the COVID-19 pandemic. He's calling for a new tax on business cash flow to replace the GST, payroll tax and insurance systems. He proposes a new system that directly taxes consumption and slashes tax compliance for small business. Reserve Bank of Australia's governor, Philip Lowe, is also pleading for tax reforms in response to the recession, urging state and federal governments to overhaul the tax on income generation, consumption and land structures. He also wants further investigation into how infrastructure is priced and built and how students and workforces are equipped to navigate the modern economy. Eleanor Cassipedes, CPA Australia's tax policy advisor says, Australia's tax system is complex and burdensome, especially for small business. We need a reform agenda to address issues such as adjusting the tax mix, our internationally uncompetitive tax rates, and simplifying the system. Robert Brunig, director of the Australian National University's Tax and Transfer Policy Institute, goes one step further, labelling the current system inefficient, complex, unfair and ill-equipped for the 21st century. The system needs to be changed and our current situation presents a golden moment to do so. He says, We need to ask ourselves whether it is really doing the job we want whether it is up to the demands of how the economy has evolved. The fact is that it is holding us back from more economic growth, which is going to start to matter a lot more due to COVID-19. Having worked as a senior executive in the Commonwealth Treasury, Greg Smith has seen the inner workings of the country's tax system up close. He has led committees dealing with budget, taxation, retirement incomes and financial system policies, and is a member of the Committee for Economic Development of Australia. Smith agrees it's time for major tax reform that is built on decisions, not slogans. In any tax reform, the vision must lift above the tax alone. It must also address real needs and concerns as part of a bigger package. We need a new employment security contract, a better housing deal, fairer taxes on savings and investments, and a guarantee that revenues can meet and manage through the crises, says Smith. Tax lawyer Melinda Peters has recently joined the growing chorus of the tax system's detractors, describing the current system as being far too complex for small businesses to navigate for even basic financial affairs. On the whole, the system is inefficient, encourages distortion and does little to achieve equity between taxpayers, says Peter, who is a partner at McCulloch Robinson Lawyers. The design of a tax policy should not be a piecemeal approach, but a radical overhaul, she says. It's time to take stock and start from scratch. 
We need long-term structural change that will stand Australia in good stead, not just for the next 12 to 24 months, but for the next 50 years. Even on an individual level, much can be done to simplify the tax and transfer system and neutralise its distortive impact. For low-income earners or a second-income earner within a family unit, our current system will often act as a disincentive to re-engage within the workforce, says Peters. The Australian government has conducted two major tax system reviews in the past 12 years, although findings have largely not been acted on. A decade ago, the Henry Tax Review outlined a raft of opportunities for tax reform, which still remain on the table for policymakers. Five years ago, the Rethink Tax Discussion Paper contemplated a new tax system that supports higher economic growth and living standards. Again, there's been little traction in achieving any real reform since 2015, despite the paper stating that the current tax system was already holding Australia back. The COVID-19 pandemic has shifted the goalposts further still, Brunig says. Even with our global environment changing so quickly, many of the ideas from the Henry Review and Rethink remain valid, but they would benefit from refreshed parameters and updated modelling. We need to have a conversation about the GST as well as the drag of tax on economic recovery. COVID-19 presents the opportunity for tax reform to support economic recovery. He says direct taxation should be abolished for a start. We have a very high corporate and personal income tax. We tax things we want people to do less of. We tax alcohol because we want people to drink less, but we don't want less jobs and less economic activity, he says. The tax system also needs to address intergenerational inequity because most of the cost from the pandemic will be paid back by younger people in terms of lost jobs and future higher taxes. Brunig says. Meanwhile, some savings are taxed heavily while others are taxed at concessional rates. We don't want people deciding what to do with their money based on tax. We want them deciding what to do with their money based on what's best for the economy, says Brunig. He's calling for the creation of a bipartisan think tank with experts from across academia, business, the social service sector and public service to be charged with the task of designing a fairer and more equitable system. However, the first step towards tax reform is securing support from all tiers of government, which makes already complex negotiations even more involved and time-consuming, given that the country is grappling with a pandemic. Most tax reformers dream of lower tax rates. However, the reformed tax rate must still produce enough money to pay for the delivery of government services that the public demands. The total tax take from all taxes and tiers of government is equivalent to 36% of Australia's GDP. Therefore, tax reform may focus on changing the mix of taxation rather than reducing taxes overall. Smith says that the trigger for tax reform is either the system falling over because it fails to raise an adequate amount of revenue or the system being sufficiently unfair or ill-suited for purpose. Genuine tax reform is very hard and only happens rarely, he says. Past tax reform has been delivered as part of a broader social deal. The Bob Hawke Paul Keating tax reforms of the 1980s closed major tax loopholes while cutting taxation rates. It increased social benefits and introduced dividend imputation and universal superannuation, says Smith. The Howard GST promised a better deal for the state funding of hospitals and schools, explains Smith. Cassipedes adds, tax is only one part of the equation and society as a whole must be better off to justify changes. The government will face significant political challenges, such as the federal-state fiscal relations, potentially removing valuable concessions or changing entitlements. So it's important that the tax reforms connect with a broader vision. Brunig agrees. The reason that tax reform is difficult is that it creates winners and losers. Generally, people who lose from tax reform will protest very loudly that they're losing but they tend to have little influence within the political system, where it's vested interests that are already getting a good deal in the tax system. And then if you take that away, they will squeal very loudly.